<laughs> uh, why not? Hey, welcome to the news you can't lose. <laughs> Do we want to start it? This is the start. This we, is the start. We've started oh, the news. What? We have started. We're starting. We've started 22 seconds ago. Well, well, this is the news you can't lose with your loser leaves wrestling crew. My name is Red Jefferson. I'm here with Moet Jaswell. How are we doing, Moet? I'm doing great, Red. Just keeping you on your toes, my friend. Thank you. I, yeah. I appreciate it. It's uh, it's good. It's good to keep you on your toes. It keeps me distracted, which is important. Distractions are important these days, Moet. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I like, yeah. yeah. What are you doing to keep distracted? This podcast. Okay. <laughs> and nothing else. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Otherwise, good I'm answer. swimming in my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's keeping you, keeping you up. And a lot of caffeine, a lot of caffeine. I woke up with a, a night terror last night that I thought my appendix burst. Oh, my gosh. I woke up and I'm just like, it's severe pain. And then I got up and I'm feeling my stomach. I'm like, where's the pain go? And then I was pacing back and forth, Googling appendix burst Ooh. and side effects. It was very, very dramatic, very Ooh. dramatic. But we're here talking about wrestling news. This is the distraction that we all want. Uh, we're covering August 9th to August 16th this week in the news. Uh, I guess we should just start with our uh, most, not the most pressing story, but one that deserves the attention. Uh, uh, WWE legend and Hall of Famer Kamala passed away this past week. Uh, I believe it's from cardiac arrest, but he also was dealing with some diabetes issues. He lost both his legs. Um, uh, how did you feel hearing about the news? Were you a Kamala fan? Moment? I was a Kamala fan. It made me a little. It made me sad to think about. The, it, the I was always a big fan of his uh, his character antics. I thought he was really good at character performance with the slapping of the belly and just the the mm. any. Uh, he was really afraid of, uh, I think, snakes or something. Or he was af very yeah. afraid of snakes. Yeah. Uh, As were all giants back then. Yes, it's true. Yeah. Andre. Kamala. Ray, Kamala. Uh, yeah. Probably Big John Stud. I'm sure. Sure. I'm sure of it. <laughs> Don't know it, but we're, we're pretty confident. Yeah. Uh, I heard that he was like a. Like the thing is, like I don't think I ever got the full Kamala experience because I don't, I don't think I saw him when he was at his scariest. Apparently, when he was on the, the territory scene, he was frightening. Like I saw him as a joke character. Like I, I've always seen him as a joke character, a terrible stereotype, but like a joke, like nothing serious about him. Uh, but I've always been curious about what he looked like when he was like super scary, right? Oh yeah. I never really thought about it. I've only seen him in this version. I didn't know there was like a, a alternate version of him where you're supposed to take him seriously. <laughs> I think like he started like this character in Memphis and in Memphis, he'd come out with like a very large African mask and he was vicious and he tried to pull people's teeth or something like that. I don't know, mm. but it was very, it's a lot scarier apparently. That's interesting. There was, yeah, it, it's, it's a weird situation a little bit because he, the, there's like weird racist undertones or racial undertones to his character and his manager and everything. Mm -hmm. But, um, ignoring all of that i still miss him <laughs> it's, it's hard to like have, i don't know we have to do a lot of ignoring in the 80s we yeah. have to do a lot of ignoring in the 80s and the 90s too honestly uh the next uh item up for business uh keith lee got hit in the head with a fireball mow it boom do we need, do we need fireballs back in wrestling oh What'd yeah you oh yeah 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 of course i like the, i like supernatural stuff even if it's cheesy, I like the way WWE does it, or at least uh, whenever they do pull it out, then not very often, like everything with Kane in the 90s was super fun. And he still does that occasionally. I like all that stuff. So um, I guess, I'm yeah, I'm glad they're pulling that angle. Uh, did I'm, you I'm, see how it was done? I don't know how it was done, but I did see it. I think it was the best way for them to do it because it was fi pretty foolproof. A lot of times with the fireball, there's a lot that goes into it that could go wrong. The lighter doesn't work. They mislight the paper or whatever like that. This one, it was in a book. Keith Lee opened up a book and a flame just shot into his face. It oh, yeah. Was, do you it was know, pretty cool. I don't I, I meant like I don't know how it was literally done. Do you know how they did it? Oh, no, no, no. OK. No because I assume yeah. there's got to be it's got to be like editing since they're allowed they're able to do that nowadays. Sure. sure. Um I, I know it that... was real fire, but I don't think it got near his face. Oh, okay, got I think it. they shot it to look like it went near his face, like you said. Oh, okay, and they added like some sound effects too, I noticed. Like a little oh, did they? Yeah, a little fireball sound. Smart. Yeah. Smart. I want more sound effects in wrestling too. Like if you have someone in a hold, I want to hear bones crack, right? There was a, a th a segment on, I think, NXT where a guy fell off of a tall, tall, like surface or whatever. 
and he made a splat sound on the ground. Really? No, no, it was a sound effect. It was I, like, no, I know. I want that. I want <laughs> okay. that more than that. I want more splash and squishes uh, in wrestling. But we're fun of the, we're fine of the fireball. We want more fireball. Uh, here's a serious one we got going on. Velveteen Dream uh, is back on the scene. He recently appeared back on NXT uh, after some allegations. He was taken off for an injury, I believe, but then he uh, stayed off because of some allegations of uh, sexual misconduct with a minor. Uh, is it too soon? I don't think he should be back at all. I think he, he should be gone. Yeah, so I was very shocked to see him back. I hear he's got heat backstage. People, uh, uh, a lot of the people at NXT didn't know that he was going to be there until the day of. So it just seems like a really bad call, in my opinion. I, mm. I, I don't think he has apologized or done anything to kind of... He's only denied. Yeah, he's only denied. And there's proof, too. It's, I mean, I guess you could say you could Photoshop it or something. But like there's a, there's multiple people that have said that they that he they, uh, that he's har- harassed them. So mm-hmm. I, I wonder what the rule is with because this uh, essentially the uh, person that was alleging uh, the incident that was went public with it. Uh, he's been he's very upset about it, of course, that uh, Velveteen Dream is back. And I looked into it a little bit, and apparently the time of the incident, the kid was 16 and Velveteen Dream is 19. Hmm. And I I know in certain states there's like a two or three uh, year rule where like if you're 17, you could date a a 19 year old. You know what I mean? Like you could – like there's like a three-year – like I know you as an adult you can't have sex with a minor, but there's like a three-year differential. If you're 16, I think 19 is technically acceptable. Uh, I don't know the circumstances. So basically what was he doing? He was sending pictures or was he assaulting? No, not not assaulting, but just uh, trying to groom minors – Multiple. So that that one, it was like one main guy, I think, that that brought it out. But there are at least a couple more that he was doing this to where he was trying to get them to send him nude photos and also by like encouraging them that like he'll get them jobs in WWE or he'll get them backstage passes oh, or all this. I didn't stuff. know that. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that. For me, that's what I find the most frustrating out of this is the that manipulation aspect of it. Sure. No, that makes sense. I did not know the extent of the manipulation. Yeah, there's more like psychological abuse that that happened through this. I'm not even sure if they've met in person, um, any of them, but who knows? Yeah, Yeah, it's true. Well, uh, moving on from that, I'll just uh, give my two cents on it, too. Yeah, he shouldn't be back. I agree with you, Moet. I think it's um, disrespectful to the uh, uh, accusers, and I feel that uh, we need more information before we allow him back. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah, he's not uh, necessary. He's not needed in the show. No. So it doesn't make sense why and, they would do this. But oh, well, yeah, especially when they lay off so many people, they laid off so many people and they couldn't have kept one of them that didn't have any allegations and thrown them in NXT. Yeah. Uh, either way, uh, fans have returned to AEW Dynamite. Uh, they have been put in pods uh, with uh, mask enforcers. Moet, is this a fun idea or do you think it's a little too soon? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a weird I, I don't I don't know if I can call any of this fun. <laughs> <But> <laughs> would you attend? Would I attend? No, I would not attend. I uh, no, no, I don't want to risk it personally. I don't have health insurance, right? I can't risk anything right now. Oh, yeah. That's how Texas America works. Yeah. I'm living on Medi-Cal, baby. <laughs> uh, lucky, lucky. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I got yeah. <laughs> now they uh they they showed a video or like at the start of Dynamite, they're like, yeah, we got fans. We're doing it right, folks, is what JR said. And like the first the guy right in the middle that's like actually working with the camera has his mask down like all under his <sighs> nose. So it's like you, you dummies. <laughs> and I like that's what you get with live TV. You get a lot of idiots like they should edit that out. Was this live this past week? It was right. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I uh, I mean, I don't know. It's it sort of depends how I, I don't know how detailed their like vetting process is of like how like temperature checks and if they're keeping distance from people. Apparently, they're, they're at least keeping a good distance from the, the wrestlers and the rest of like the AEW talent, which I guess is good. I don't know. But you're still it putting them like in they're, harm. They're pretty separate uh, like, because of like a pod, like it's people that you already hang out with. 
Yeah, I didn't know about this pod situation. That's new to me. Yeah. Well, have you heard about pods in general with uh, COVID? No. Uh, so pods are uh, the group of people that you regularly see. For you, it's Barb and Atticus. Well, those are your, that's your pod because you live with them. You see them frequently. Uh, my pod is, you know, because I live alone, it's just uh, uh, my girlfriend and such that I see and my little brother. So that's my pod. So it's the pod of which you frequently see and you don't go outside of it. You know, you don't interact directly or within a six foot difference with those other people. So I'm assuming they're in a pod. Sure. Oh, so it's not a literal pod. It's not like no, a, no, like a not sci-fi. A I, I, or, okay. Cause I was thinking like a little dome. Like the matrix and they get out of the gel. That's why I was confused. Cause I didn't see any domes in the, any, any pods. <laughs> and I'm like, I tell me more about these pods or, or no, yeah. So you're a, saying the pods are, you're supposed to go in with your, with your pod mates. I guess. I don't know. I don't know what these people are doing. It's Florida. You're the, I think that's no. the suggested. I think that's the suggested thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but nobody <laughs> follows suggestions in Florida. That's we that's, that's been established already. The land where laws are dead. Uh, but WWE is going a different route. They want virtual fans. They want virtual fans at their uh, at SummerSlam. Uh, Moet, would you be a virtual fan? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand the words. I, I I was looking up video er, clips of uh nba is doing it and it i i thought they were fake like i thought they would just have videos of of fake fans which is what i guess fine or whatever and pipe in like you know ch uh chance or whatever sure. but it looks like you can actually like buy a seat and just have your face while like you know projected while watching the game Isn't that nuts that sounds pretty cool there's gonna be a bunch <laughs> of led screens apparently in the audience uh, and they're going to project their images, their 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 profiles onto this mass arena. I don't know where these are going to go. Like, are they going to just surround the ring and you pretend that the seats are filled? Like they show the seats and make it look they space them out. So it looks like they're deep. Or are they putting these screens on individual seats? <laughs> <laughs> I like I could. I guess that they have like a barrier where they have the, the wrestlers, the real uh acting as real fans or whatever you call them like what they're doing now and then past that you have uh the digital fans so i assume it'd be just probably big screen tvs with with like four or five like faces just like huh, huh. Hmm? which yeah which is... <laughs> I imagine uh, just a bunch of people like playing with their dogs and <laughs> like leaving because how many times are you going to like a zoom where you just leave or you pause the screen so it's all these blank screens from people that just want to watch that don't want to be on tv that would be good that'd be very funny because i usually if i'm in like a zoom uh zoom hangout or something if i have to go to the bathroom or something i, I tilt the screen the down screen. uh oh no no so if because atticus is usually just sitting next to me <laughs> so i just tilt the screen down so people can stare at atticus that's very um, fun. And so I would love to see a bunch of cats and dogs to watch in <laughs> SummerSlam. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, I like the virtual thing. I think it's fun. It's a good um, uh, substitute. I think it's fun. And it's innovative. I'm fine with virtual things. Uh, next up, uh, Jericho and his band Fozzie have played at Sturgis this past week. Uh, and uh, I don't believe – I don't know how uh, – spaced out they were or uh, in similarity to the AEW or how festivals are doing it now. Uh, but that being said, uh, a lot of fans are up in arms about it. They call Jericho the COVID God. Uh, uh, do you think Jericho is the reason that COVID is spreading? That's, <laughs> that's how you, that's what you took out of COVID God, that he's the literal God you believe of COVID. That Jericho's the reason of the surge in I cases. <laughs> I, yeah, let's blame it on Jericho, the, okay. the, the son of a bitch. That's, oh, I'm going to write that down. Let's blame it on Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. No, I it, it's uh, I guess we'll just see in two weeks. And then Sturgis is super irresponsible, I think, that that existed. And there, there are all these photos of uh, uh, concert goers for like at Smash Mouth and uh, and, and Fozzie and I think it's going to it's just going to continue to be bad because that's America. And this is my take on politics right now. So that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Moet. Yeah, but it, it is what's uh, confusing to me. Is he's he's a good person. He seems like a good person. 
that just does dumb things occasionally mm-hmm. because he um he gave five thousand dollars to uh for kamala's um uh funeral services mm-hmm. so his family didn't have to pay for anything there and he's consistently does that for wrestlers in need if there's like a, a horrible accident like gofundme page or something he's always like putting money into those things so it always just feels like one step forward, two steps back. Like anytime I can feel respect for him. Are you getting stressed out by me? Yes. <laughs> no, no. I just by my it. side of this? I don't know. Yeah, that's that's why I think it's hard. Yeah. It, I think it's important to acknowledge the good, but also acknowledge the bad. Just make sure it's like, you know. You know. Word on the street is he's a Republican. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Word that on the sucks. street. I remember when Obama, like it's 2008, right? When Obama got elected and Jericho was on TMZ. And they're just like, hey, how do you feel about Obama becoming president? And he's just like, well, I work out and I work hard to get abs. And now Obama wants to take 40 percent of my abs away. He didn't <laughs> just, say that. What a dingus. What a... Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Uh, but uh, last story of the afternoon week uh, that we care about, because there's a lot of things that happen, but I don't care about them. Uh, I don't. A lot of things happen in the news, but we got Dewey Foley, uh, Dewey Foley, Mick Foley's son has been an important figure in the creative team as of recently. And uh, he is one of the co uh, creative people for 205 Live alongside Adam Pierce. Moet, did you know that 205 is still around? No, I literally thought it was over. I thought they yeah. had given up on it maybe like six months ago. <laughs> I, I did as well. Uh, but good for Dewey, I guess. Good that he's yeah. got that. There's a little bit of nepotism being thrown sure. around, whether or not they admit it or not. I don't. I read that Mick Foley is not admitting it. He's not. He's mm. saying that it's all Dewey's hard work and, and work ethic. You know. Well, I do believe that 100 uh, percent nepotism for him getting in the door and becoming a writer's assistant, because usually you need years of a television experience. Like they have a pretty high bar for the people that they get on. So Dewey getting that writer's assistant position was a hundred percent nepotism, but I don't think they give him this type of responsibility unless they thought he was capable. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I mean, they've done dumber things in the past. I, 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 I I fully expect them to (laughs) do that. that. I like that. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. What do you feel? Do you think it's, are you, are you interested I'm, I, I like to uh, – I, I thought this was an interesting news story because I love Foley, and I think it's interesting that um, his line is continuing in wrestling uh, despite Noelle Foley's uh, whatever – <laughs> whatever she's doing <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know how she's to describe part of it. it yeah she uh she's a correspondent or an interviewer or she's, she's a trying, wrestler sometimes she's trying to become that they uh because of this you made me end up on like a, a video rabbit hole of watching her learn how to train uh watching yeah. her training to wrestle and uh she she doesn't it's not looking great it's not, like not her, her future's not, not looking it. great yeah in, in wrestling anyways and but, uh, I, I and I don't want to speak ill of people. I, well, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Who are you speaking ill about? I was going to speak ill of Noel Foley about her what her trading or what? No. It's... I I don't know. I don't like her interview style. I've seen her at a few comic cons and I've seen her do some wrestlingy things. And boy, does she get on my nerves. <laughs> Oh, Brad, speak it ill guy. of Noel Foley. Oh, <laughs> wait till Nick guy. hears about this. <laughs> what, no, I don't dislike her as a person. She seems like a very sweet person. She seems like a very sweet person. But I don't think a bubbly personality belongs on a wrestling interviewer. I feel like it's too distracting. What do you, what do you prefer? You like the Mean Gene style? Nope. The What? I like I like professionalism and I like straightforward talk. I want the attention taken off the interviewer and on to the wrestler. And I feel she's too giggly. She's freaking giggling all the goddamn time. Oh, giggles are no and good. And I find it very. What's that? Giggles are no good. It's not in, the, not in wrestling. No giggles. Unless that... you're doing the clown. Yeah, yeah. I, I I was gonna say I like Mean Gene, Mean Gene style because he would like talk back at them like he wouldn't he wouldn't take sass he would stay in character stay in the world but still being like that's ridiculous hulk hogan how dare you yeah and i always thought that was fun i like the straightforward and that's why i think tony Schiavone, if given the opportunity is the new mean gene 
He is the new mean gene because he's funny and he takes abuse, but sometimes he dishes it back. He does. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, and then that gives the wrestlers fire to get back at him and be like, how dare you? How dare yeah. you? You know, and then and that's pretty fun. Uh, him and uh, Britt Baker do that pretty often. It's it's, it's a good, good Love team it. they have. Hmm. Well, Mo, that's all the news I've got. Uh, any other things to add? Anything that you saw in the week that you thought was interesting? Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Havoc has been released. B Priestley oh, has been released from AEW cool. and that's Sadie Gibbs. Thing. Yeah. Uh, that's crazy, but yeah. also sort yeah. of expected. I think some of them are released because of UK issues. Yeah. Like they two just of them, uh, the two female wrestlers are released because of uh, uh, travel restrictions and Jimmy Havoc over the allegations against him for sexual assault and misconduct. And he like got into a fight with Excalibur in like the first month of filming or Did something. He? Yeah, the friggin' jerks. They they got they got over it, but it was just like dumb. Like they got drunk and started fighting each other at a bar. <laughs> and then really? they, yeah, yeah. But like the next day, like Excalibur is like, it's fine. We're fine. We're fine. <laughs> but they like like don't do that, man. <laughs> like I want to fight Excalibur. <laughs> Jealous. <laughs> <laughs> he seems yeah, like a fun Jimmy guy Havoc, to fight. you're doing everything wrong <laughs> uh, but that's all that's what we got this is the news you can't lose this is the loser leaves Let wrestling crew this is what uh august 9th august 16th uh please follow us on instagram youtube at loser leaves wrestling twitter we got loser leaves pod and make sure to subscribe on spotify and and apple podcast why don't I do it right now do it right now while you're on the phone go while you're watching this go on your phone and do it it's right easy. it's seconds it's seconds it's easy it's, it's so easy you just gotta press a couple buttons you'll make our and lives feel better begging. i don't mind begging like i beg you like, <laughs> <please>. <laughs> subscribe subscribe everywhere uh my name is red jefferson and my name is boa jaswell thank you bye 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 bye